This episode is brought to you by cloudpano.com. Adding more revenue to your business is simple. Offer more value. With CloudPano, you can create 360 tours and present them to your clients quickly and efficiently. It only takes five minutes to create a VR tour with cloudpano.com and your clients will be thrilled. You can now avoid monthly fees with their new lifetime license option. For a limited time, you can save $100 on a lifetime license using the code shooting spaces at checkout. Join the movement and join Cloud Pano today. This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Hello, welcome to Shooting Spaces. This is Brian here from New York. And Rich Baum from beautiful, rainy Sacramento, California. How beautiful Sacramento, California. I wish I could say the same about Ground Zero here in New York, but uh, we're getting by. Um, but it's also been raining here for the last week. So if there's any shining light, we're in, we're in a similar weather, uh, weather grouping here. How's it going over there by you? You're, you're done shooting, right? I am. I am. I, I really, um, it was a big, if anybody out there is thinking, what's the right thing to do? What do you do for you, for your clients, for your family? Um, I think, remember, family first, health first. Um, do what you got to do to, to uh be true to yourself, be true to your family. Um, if, if your client is telling you to, well, I'll get somebody else, then I would say that's the greatest opportunity. That's the greatest blessing you can get to know in hard times that, that that's how they are. And, and, you know, maybe you didn't need that client in the first place, but I'm not trying to be down on people. I think it's tough for everyone, but at least in every state's different. Every city might be different. And, but we're, where we are here, um, it's really, it's uh, shut down. And well, you're, luckily yeah, you're, me, si- you're similar to us, right? You're on complete yeah. lockdown. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. They're, um, I mean, essential, excuse me, um, essential um, services do not include uh, realtors. They do include, it, it could be misinterpreted where they do include um, some services, but I think those are uh, builders, those are people that are, are doing infrastructure. Those are, are those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, you could do this. And I actually wrote up a, a whole list of, um, of protocol that I need done if I'm going out to shoot. And, uh, you know, for the right time being, though, it's, I just don't feel good about it. And I, I'm really also I'm here with my whole family, family, and I'm taking advantage. We exercise every morning. We are doing playing games in the afternoon, in the evening, and it's different for you. You kids play games all the time, but I've got kids that are in their their twenties now, and, and so I'm excited and really kind of. No, well, my, my kids have class every day, so they're doing class remotely through Zoom. So mm-hmm. my uh, well, my one son who's actually in school, he has about two and a half to three hours of class every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my kids are all, all, uh, my daughter is, is in nursing school and she's doing, I think eight hours of work a day. So yeah, I know. But it's tough too, because my son has to juggle his work that he's doing and getting the iPad to work with the zoom and all this. So I'm pretty much sitting right next to him for two and a half hours, taking these classes with him. So he knows your pain of trying to get these zoom Zoom things going. Exactly. But he's getting it. Like he knows how to unmute and mute now. And he's five. He knows how to raise his hand when the, you know, when he knows the answer to the question, there's a little raise hand button. So he's getting it. So good stuff. Yeah. But yeah. you know, hopefully, uh, you know, it'll start normalizing a little bit. At least this was his first week of class. So at least now he's kind of getting used to it. So when we go into next week, he kind of understands the schedule where, you know, nine o'clock he goes down, his first class starts and, you know, they give a break. So it's not sitting in front of the iPad for three and a half, three hours, whatever it is, you know, he's there for a half hour, then an hour, then a break, then whatever it is. So. But, you know, I think this is a really good, okay. I'm an, I'm an older guy, but I think it's a really good opportunity to, um, you know, take stock in several things in your family and yourself. Um, do, try and come out of this better than you were to going into it. Um, educate yourself in one way or another. Go out and, and take some. I, I, I posted a little thing on Facebook today. I just drove down the street and I st- stuck my camera out my car, ca- not even leaving my car. And I said, you know what? I, 
people that are getting new into this business, they can shoot houses from their car and edit it in their car. And I did a sky replacement in my car. Uh, someone replied that uh, we worried about the legalities of that. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. And yes, I guess there is. A, I'm not trying to advocate anybody break the law and take a picture of somebody's house. But I'm just saying, Go out there and get sky shots, get for your sky library, get better, learn something, learn video, take your point, part 107 uh, education, do all kinds of things, but do it. I mean, even if it's just little things every day, try and try. You and know, keep it's funny you, you tell that story because Canon today actually <laughs> shipped me the 90 millimeter tilt shift as a loaner for 10 days and it's coming, it's coming in two days from now. And I've been looking forward to it all month since I got approved for the loan. And I'm kind of torn because I don't even know if legally I'm allowed to go out even by myself and just shoot things locally because I just don't know what the laws are. And if, I mean, I'm not near anybody, but you're telling me just go do it. But, um, pish, pish. I'm sorry. You know what? This is uh, being recorded, and I don't know what to tell people. But you know what? We're all yeah. But you know what? You know but if you get stopped and, and someone and says, "Why are you out?" This and that. But um, it's all right. I know. I know some people <laughs> in the police department here. I'll I'll be all right. I'll get you can it. come on. You can, you can make up something that sounds official. Yeah, I'm just standing I'm shooting this huge uh, public space. Nassau County uh, Police Department. Thank you very much. Please, I can't tell you because it's very uh, special stuff. So. Exactly. I do have a Nassau County badge, so maybe that'll go a long <laughs> no, way. Don't show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that'll go a long way. I'm not a police officer, but <laughs> if you know, if you know somebody, you get a little badge, so maybe that'll go a long way. But you um, know what? Take just go take advantage of this time and, and be safe. And, you know, I'm, I'm saying, you know, they just closed all the parks. They closed mm -hmm. all the county parks, the state parks, the community parks. And, you know, and I understand that too. I was watching all the people, the kids on the, uh, I say kids, the younger people on um, Daytona beach in Florida. Uh, oh yeah. It's, you know what? It's gotta, go gotta be, Got to be mindful that, you know, anyway, I don't want to get into politics. And get into, <laughs> I'm just trying to say, take this opportunity to really think of, um, redo your website, license some images, register your images, right, Brian? All that stuff. Exactly. Yeah, we spoke about that too. And I'm actually excited to see how, you know, this affects everybody afterwards because i think people are going to come back with a whole different mindset not only towards their business towards their families towards towards life in general i think people are going to come out of this you know with their finance looking at their finances in a whole new way i think it's oh gonna <laughs> don't, even, no, don't even go there <laughs> no but i'm just saying i think it's gonna i don't want to say teach people a lesson because that's not the right words but i think it's going to change people's mindsets about everything and every aspect of their lives um for better or for worse hopefully for better mm -hmm. um just going through whatever we're going to go through for the next month two months three months uh hopefully that's it um I think everyone's going to just come out, come out with a different perspective on life in general and everything that it's entailed in that from your friendships, from your family, from your business, from your, you know, your finances and everything else. But anyway, on to the topic at hand in today's episode. Um, today we have asked the guys questions and we have two questions that we're going to play for you because they're very similar. And I think, um, I think they can both be answered you know, together, I guess, if you want to call it that in the same, in the same sort of answer, they're, they're slightly different and they're both from overseas, which is pretty cool. I think we don't get overseas questions too often. And today we're going to play two in a day. So the first one we have is from Charlie Walsh and he is out of Australia. So Charlie, yeah, I, I, I've been really watching the names from different countries and Charlie sounds Australian. Yes. Very um, prejudice thing there, but <laughs> it does. All right, I'm going to play Charlie's question now. Here we go. Okay. G'day, guys. It's Charlie Walsh here from Charlie Walsh Photography and Artwork in Australia. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram. Guys, my question is, I'm not new to photography. I am new to real estate photography, though. I am looking to get into it. And the question I have is, how should I go about this? Do you think um, just reach out to the realtors, real estate agents, and as such, via email, or give them a call, or go in person. 
I uh, live in a very small town, about 1,500 people here where I live. But there's a couple of bigger cities or country towns not far from me that I hope to break into as well. Um, yeah, so just wondering how to go about getting out there, getting out and about. I've been building a portfolio up in the last two weeks that I've been listening to you guys. And I've also been watching Rich's YouTube tutorials, which have been great, and also going to check out some others. Anyway, guys, keep up the good work. I hope you can point me in the right direction. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Charlie. And uh, before we start getting into some details, I will play Fraser's question. Fraser is from the UK and has uh, a similar question in the same vein. So here we go. Hey, Rich and Brian. Um, I'm Fraser. I'm a photographer based in the UK. Um, I hope you're really well. Um, I uh, can't thank you enough for all the help you've given over the uh, past couple of years when I've been um, doing my trade as a, a real estate uh, or property photographer, as they call it over here. And um, yeah, I was so interested to hear episode 99 uh, that I've just listened to. And it's basically uh, finished at the end um, of where I sort of am now because I've been working for an agency um, and um, uh, I'm looking to go out on my own and um, I'm just wondering about the transition um, and uh, it's yeah quite tough to figure out what is the next step. I think my work's good enough to transition but it's quite hard short of knocking on all doors and doing all that sort of stuff. It'd be good to maybe have a few guide points whether that be should I get better gear? Um, should I do more training? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I hope uh, that is clear and you can understand my accent. Anyway, um, it, thanks for all you do and uh, all the best. Cheers. All right. Thank you. Well, I want to start off by saying I, I we're the ones with the accent, Brian and I. Exactly. I mean, you're, you're the non-accent, at least here in, in the U.S. But uh, great just for stuff. just for reference, yeah, I know he um, <clears throat> Fraser reference. He just finished episode ninety nine, which got him thinking. That's the episode we had with Brandon Votes, um, where we talked about are we salespeople or are we photographers? So just. Um, you know, I don't know if you had that handy, Rich, but just for reference, so we know yeah. what he's talking about. Um, but the reason I thought these were good, because I think, you know, you can, you, I think one answer can kind of answer both of these questions together. Um, so there are a couple of different things that I know Fraser touched upon, um, things to, you know, obviously they both touched upon marketing and how to go out and market and get new clients. But, you know, to take a step back and start from the beginning, he talked about gear and training, Fraser. Um, and I think you and I both agree because we've talked about this. Um, I don't think gear is going to make or break you as a photographer. Now, will your work look better with better gear? Probably. But, you know, we've all, look, will it make your job easier? Look, having a tilt shift lens will make your job easier than not having a tilt shift lens. But can you produce great results without it? You know, I think every one of us, started with, you know, uh, I don't want to say a prosumer, but a mid-level camera or whatever sort of zoom lens you had. I mean, unless you came from like uh, weddings or some other genre of photography where you had the equipment already, but I don't think gear is something that's going to hold you back from taking your career to the next level, whether you're transitioning from a, an agency in uh, Fraser's regard, or you are, I guess, just starting out um, from another genre of photography, going into real estate photography as Charlie is, I don't think gear is going to hold you back from producing quality work that can get you work. Would you tend to agree, Rich? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, education over gear. Um, yeah. and, and the way I look at gear in real estate photography, um, you're not going to see any difference, in my opinion, over a uh, a mirrorless uh, crop sensor camera or a low-end Nikon camera, uh, crop sensor, whatever. Um, most lenses are probably sharp enough, so it's not that. 
okay, if you're doing weddings, you need ISO performance, you need uh, focusing performance. You don't need any of that in real estate photography. I have a video on the IA6000 with the Rokinon or Samyang 12 millimeter lens is, is the best deal you can get. And I still believe in it. Absolutely. 100% I'll stand by that. So I don't think it's important. A geared head is nice, but you can do it with a bald head. Um, a, uh, um, a tilt shift lens is something you absolutely don't need it. And you can absolutely do fake tilt shift uh, shots. I still do fake tilt shift shots because I'm too too lazy to go put my tilt shift on. And it, oh, it is I you're too lazy to just shift it down. No, <laughs> I'm not quite. I'm almost there, but I'm not quite. Um, okay. But I think that that it's really it's not it's a no brainer here. And also in in this kind of photography, you don't need focusing. You don't need. I mean, you can focus. You need to focus, but you don't need fast focusing. You don't need ISO performance. You're you're fine. A couple of lights, you can do it. So the gear. Okay, we want a tripod that is is better than just a one of those cheap nineteen dollar video tripods, which people come to my workshops and I want to pull my hair out the little I have left. But I think you just get something decent, you know, and a good thing about a tripod and a head and a, even a tilt shift. These things are the only things I would call investments in our business. Cameras are not investments. Lenses are not. I mean, they're sort of investments, but they only last so long. But tripods will last 30, 40 years. Anyway, so I think that the, that the, the gear is, is really, once you get what you can do and, uh, and what you've got, I think you're fine on there. Um, I think the education is really, really um, important. And education not only comes from online, my YouTube channel or, or, or podcast, it comes from going out and shooting. Now, this could be shooting on your own. And I think Brian and I both, are, you're, you're a proponent of sometimes shooting for free. Yes, um, that's, that's give, how I got started. So I'm never going to say. It's going to experience, yeah. yeah experience. It's going to give you a uh, portfolio material. It is going to give you um, it, just the opportunity, the experience of getting out and finding different situations. So I think that the education and doing, whether it's my free videos or you buy, um, you buy paid videos like uh, Mike Kelly's or like Matthew Stallone's or like uh, uh, Jordan Powers uh, and Nick's uh, video video uh, uh, education. I think that that's great. I think that our webinars are great. You know, it's twenty nine dollars. I think that that's more than enough, more more than cheap enough to get the education. So I think that you can do that. Now, those are the easy things you have control over. Uh, but the things well, you don't have control well, over. Well, those are also sorry for interrupting. Those are things I feel like when you're transitioning or starting, those are things that you're not even doing. Even when you're, you know, intermediate or advanced or you're doing this full time, you always have to be, I mean, I don't know about you, Rich. I mean, I'm always watching tutorial videos. You put out a video or Nathan cool puts out a video. I watch it because no, no matter where you are in your know, business, I know, I know. you know, you can always learn. So education is something that, yeah, you want to do as much as you can when you're starting to learn and, and refine your technique and develop your technique, but that's something that's never going to end. And you know the 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 videos on gear are great, and we can get lost in them. I know I do, but spend the time on the educational videos that are pertinent to whatever you're doing, whether it's wedding photography or real estate photography or whatever. But uh, these are all things that you can do. But going out and doing it, and then coming home and and watching the videos, and then doing that part of it. It all comes together. So, and while yeah. you're learning, while, while you're going out and doing it and practicing, posting images for critique, I feel like that is crucial. And uh, I think too many people are afraid to post their images. And, you know, posting your pictures and getting bashed is, is humbling, but it helps you grow. You know, that's, I think every good photographer will tell you that was part of their growth when somebody went out there and just said, you know, you think these are great, but this is the problem. You know, for me, part of it was, um, for me personally, part of it was obviously posting on Facebook groups, but part of it was also, you know, doing a portfolio review with Tony Colangelo, where he really just told me my portfolio was really awful <laughs> and I thought it was great. Um, you know, and then over the course of the last year, it's gotten significantly better, but I think showing your work to other people really helps you grow in a way that, 
you can otherwise, you know, find somebody to always, you know, I, I, you know, I have, I have someone, a buddy of mine who we know, who we always share new projects with each other before we send them to a client and we can, um, you know, just say, Hey, you notice anything on any of these images before I send it off. And more often than not, there are things that I have to fix. So yeah, you know, doing some sort of photo critique, whether it's with a buddy of yours or just putting your images on, uh, any of the Facebook groups, I, I guess the Flickr groups, people are still active in the Flickr groups. Do you know, Rich? I, I don't, but I, I assume they are. I, I I'm truly assume. So what I think you should do is it's a, um, it's a Flickr group and Flickr was where it's funny. It's like antique. Now. It's yeah. like the MySpace of photos, but you go on the Flickr group, PFRE for which stands for photography for real estate. And he, um, Brandon now is the, it used to be Larry Lorman. Now Brandon owns it and runs it. And PFRE dot or photography for real estate dot net is a tremendous resource. So he has the the blog and he has just years and years and years of posts and you can find anything you want and some great stuff. But there's also the Flickr group on uh, the Flickr PFRE group on Flickr where you can post an image. You can post two images a day. Each image has to come with um, lighting details or non-lighting details or details. And the great thing is you can see, go through image after image after image, and you can find out what they're doing. And then you can go into an in image that you like. You can find a photographer that you like because it's really important when you're learning to pattern yourself at it. This is what I want my images to look at, look like. Rich, I'm so, looking now. Oh, you're, you're a top contributor to the PFRE Flickr group. Did you know that? No, I'm not. Oh, you're, 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 I number four, you're number, four, you're number four on the list. Impossible. That's what it Impossible. says. Impossible. Okay. Then it's been, then it's out of business because I haven't gone <laughs> on Flickr in years. I've been on Flickr, but I don't think I posted a photo in, in two or three years. Yeah, so. I'm trying to see if there's a way to sort by newest added, but um, anyhow. <laughs> Um, Maybe there's somebody else that's not me that's pretending to be. I mean, me, there's thirteen thousand members. In, there's thirteen thousand members in that group, so there's a lot of images to look through. So yeah, but there's some great stuff, and you know what? I think Scott Hargis. Um, you know, also pick out the people that you really like, like the people that I would follow: Mike Kelly, Scott Hargis, Tony Colangelo. Um, you know, there are just some wonderful photographers there and you can just watch and learn. And the thing too is remember, I always say, you don't know what you don't know. And I think the more you learn and the more you put yourself out there, people are going to show you that like people that are learning that are starting, don't understand about verticals and keeping your camera level. Well, that's understandable because, uh, and now looking back, you think, oh my God, I couldn't believe I didn't know that. But um, it's important and somebody's going to point that out and you're going to learn from that. So really important. Cool. Now on to the question that oh boy, uh, the, the hard part that Charlie <laughs> asked, and uh, I know that most people have been waiting for, how do you go out there and get new work? Um, and I think, I think Rich, you and I probably have taken different um, strategies to go about this. You know, I know I have. So I'm actually curious to hear what you did because what I did was a little out of the norm. And maybe I had a slight advantage because my brother does internet marketing and SEO, but that's kind of the route I went with when I started. <laughs> now, the first thing I did was obviously called up all the people I knew who were realtors, whether they were friends, two of the people were, or one of the pe one of the people, one of the persons who I called up was a guy I went to high school with who is a local agent who still six years later is a client of mine till this day. So, um, you know, I called up all the people I knew that were agents and said, Hey, this is what I'm doing now. This is what I'm offering. I'd love to come out on a property and just show you what I can do, which is going back to what we said. Work and boy, your old, your first stuff was great. Uh -huh. yeah. You posted it. <laughs> yeah, I did post it. That was, that was the worst part about that. If anyone wants Mine's to go. just as bad, if not worse. The worst part about that, I think was it in uh, your tips and tricks group. If anyone wants to go see it and search my name was that wasn't even a real estate shoot. <laughs> that was for an interior designer. <laughs> Which is what Which makes it even, even worse. worse. <laughs> you know, my first job ever is shooting skating. And I recently told this on Matt Stallone's uh, podcast. Clown vomit. Clown exactly. vomit alert. Anyway. I recently told too. this I recently told this story on Matt Stallone's podcast, Coffee Talk with Stallone. I don't know if you saw I was on there. I saw, but, I saw it. It was but great. My first job 
ever before I shot real estate was for an interior designer by accident. And those images were what I delivered. So it just goes to show you, you know, give it a couple of years and you can produce okay. some half decent work. Um, but um, nevertheless, yeah, call up, call up for sure to start anyone, you know, and then try to get work that way. Shoot for free if you need to. I've done it. That's how I, I got, work, got new clients. That's how I was able to also go into a higher end market um, by calling up higher end agents and say, Hey, I, I'm trying to up my game. Let me try some new techniques. And they turn into clients. But the biggest thing for me was my SEO, my internet marketing. And because my brother does SEO for a living, I always knew the importance of you know ranking well locally on the search engine. So when I started, I, I spent a lot of time you know, making sure that I got to the top of those search engines. And, you know, if you work with a really reputable company, they can get you up there pretty quickly. It's not too hard because our competition is not that significant, I would gather, in any regional market. I mean, I don't know how, you know, how it is by you in Sacramento, but even here for me on Long Island, you know, how many people am I competing against? Five, six, seven people. So it's not, it's not crazy to get up there. Um, but that's been huge for me to be able to get on the first page of Google. Um, and you can get on the first page of Google in multiple ways. The more, you know, it's kind of like real estate. The more real estate you have on the first page of Google, the less they're going to see other people. So, you know, when you search for a local listing, let's say real estate photographer, Long Island, for example, besides the actual listings, um, there's also that little map section that has local businesses in the map. So if you're able to get yourself on that map and then you're also ranking well, so you're right under there and then you can even go a bit further if you want to, you know, spend a little money on some paid ads, you can theoretically, you know, your name can be like on the top three, four listings um, on the search engines. And I haven't checked my rankings in a while, but last time I checked, I was ranking well on the, in the maps and I was ranking first for Long Island photog real estate photographer and the actual search engines. So on top of the fold, and I don't know if you're familiar with this, what, what the above the fold or below the fold means is anything you see before you have to scroll or um, before you have to scroll down. So anything that's on the screen right when you pop up is above the fold. Um, they were already seeing me in the maps and the first section and the first listing. So my name was already there twice before they even had to scroll. So that has been a huge thing for me as far as getting new clients and new work um, from people that I didn't know or networking. And that, it's hard to say that was better than other options because I didn't really do the cold calling. That's not really my style. It doesn't really work for me. Now, if I met people that were agents, yeah, you know, I sold them and I, you know, gave them my pitch and the whole spiel, but, you know, going door to door to agents wasn't really my thing. And I just, I never did that. So I'm not saying what I did was better or worse. That's just the strategy I took. And, um, it was, I was able to go for, if, I don't know if it was necessarily because of that, because I also, I focused my ranking on luxury. So if you type in, let's say luxury real estate photographer on Long Island, you know, I, I show up, I was able to break a little bit easier into the luxury market um, and do it that way. So yeah, I didn't take the, uh, the guerrilla marketing approach that most people did. So it's hard for me to comment on that. This episode is brought to you by HD Photo Hub. With modern marketing tools for your clients and a powerful back office to help you stay organized and efficient, HD Photo Hub is a secret weapon of successful real estate photographers everywhere. When you register with promo code Shooting Spaces, you'll get a free total marketing kit for your first property. Check them out at hdphotohub.com. HD Photo Hub, where great photos become powerful marketing. That's hdphotohub.com. And remember, um, you know, we're talking to someone in Australia and uh, someone in England. So it, it's, I don't even know how, you know, if, if the Google would be much different there. But, you know, it's, you're getting the, you're getting the gist of it. Yeah. And, well, uh, we should preface it with saying that what, yeah. what I'm saying and what you're saying, Richard, Absolutely. based on our markets, Absolutely. let, let alone even different cities in the U S they're in different countries. So, yeah. you know, you might have to adapt some of these methods appropriately. Yeah. And, and for me, it's very different. I mean, I, when I got out of the movie industry as a technician, I decided I got to get a job. And I went back and started taking pictures and I realized I had to get better at, cause I've been a photographer all my life, but I had to get really good at professionally photography in general. I mean, real estate 
people, whatever. It's all different, but it's all photography. So I needed to get really good. And I started looking on Craigslist. I started looking on um, Indeed on anything I could online. And I, um, I called myself the top of the bottom uh, at Craigslist because I knew that if there was a job, there was like two or three years when I started out, if there was a job that came up in Craigslist under several categories, uh, not only real estate, but creative or film or whatever it was, I knew that 75% of the time I would get the job because I knew what jobs were out there and I knew I got them and I knew which ones I didn't get. So I got really good at shooting weddings, people, sports. I got, I mean, I started shooting marathons. I started shooting weddings. I started shooting anything I could to get work. And that really helped me because it rounded me out and it really helped my photography thinking on my feet. I mean, 30 years in the movie industry helped me too, because I had a really high level of professionalism, but I then sort of started shooting for uh, rental companies. I started shooting for apartment companies for for uh, any real estate I could get off of there. You I did started, a lot of Airbnb also, right? I didn't do a lot of Airbnb. Oh, I thought you did. I've, done, I've probably done 20 Airbnbs through my life, oh. but I did start shooting for every state. Every scape, we did all the 360s, oh, yes. um, which not a Ricoh camera, but we used the actual DSLR on a nodal ninja head. And I used to shoot. I have that. I have a nodal ninja head. Yeah, I still do. Do you want to buy one? No, you've got no, one. I Anybody mine. out there wants to buy one? I've got a great one for sale. Well, but I should I, probably sell mine too now that I have the Ricoh Theta. I oh, yeah, no you probably get at least five or 10 bucks for it. Well, that was my um, old rig. It was the, the yeah. nodal ninja with an eight millimeter yeah. Sigma lens on my DSLR. Well, I didn't go that route. I actually had the Nikon, um, the 10.5 fisheye, which yeah, I had mine to was. Take, it was the I had to take uh, five around and one straight up. And that was, uh, and the eight millimeter would have cut out two shots, which in hindsight, I wish I had gone for that. But I, the bottom line was I learned how to do that. And I learned how to then deal with customers. And so me going into this, it kind of gravitated. I still shoot sports and I still shoot weddings, but I, I, I've really embraced shooting buildings, shooting spaces. And I really um, have credited it to just being in all kinds of situations. Now, if you're getting into this, I think there are ways you can go about it. You can now, it could be different in England and it could be different in Australia, but I think that you can um, have, try and get a presentation or a talk with your local real estate um, uh, society or whatever it is, a local um, real estate brokerage. You can go in and say, hey, can I talk to your, um, you know, at a meeting, you can be the presenter. You could actually bring donuts and bring or pay a sponsorship and do that. You, Brian, have recently uh, started doing pitches with the Design Guild, right? Uh, Interior Design Society, yes. Same thing, basically. Same thing. Same, personally, same personally, I have gotten zero. I mean, I've gotten so little return on investment for the amount of time I put into it. I used to bring 40-inch TVs to these places and bring food and bring uh, written material. And I had- Well, I'm not doing pitches like that, though. What I'm doing is, you know, I'm obviously a member and I pay yearly, but I'm just going to their networking meetings and just talking to people. Okay. Yeah. So I don't so there's different ways of doing it. Yeah, I don't actually give a pitch. I don't even go there and try to sell my service. I mm -hmm. just go there and just try to talk to people and meet yeah. people, get their cards and and just keep in touch. Yeah. Now there was there was, I'm sorry for interrupting you. There no. was um, an architect and interior design conference coming up. Um, it was supposed to be the end of April in Brooklyn that I was actually heavily considering getting a <laughs> Not booth. Anymore. Yeah, I was heavily considering getting a booth at, and uh, they were really trying to sell me. It was going to be very expensive. Their booth was $2,000 for the day. But, you know, doing interior design work, one job, two jobs paid off. So it's not so bad. Um, and I was, I was, I was this close to signing the contract. And then all this started happening two weeks ago. And I said, let me just kind of wait it out and see what happens. And clearly now, I mean, it's supposed to be April 26. I, I doubt it's going to happen at this point based on the way things are going. So thank God uh, I signed the contract and don't have to fight them for money back. But I think it's a good idea. And I, I just wanted to uh, just say that um, you can absolutely um, knock on doors. One little tip I've, I've thought about and, and one thing not to do is don't find some uh, somebody that posts in a magazine or something online, look at the pictures and the pictures are horrible. Don't look at that and then contact the agent and go, listen, 
I just want to let you know I was looking at your listing and your photos suck and they're the worst, no matter how nice you say it. Don't do that because you're going to get, well, that person is my whole reason for being successful and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Or <laughs> or if it was the realtor's husband who shot the pictures or vice yeah. versa. There's no winning. There's it's no just winning. bad taste. But, but you can look at it this way, I thought, and I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to probably do it. Listen. I, I see you've got a photographer and they're, 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 you're probably very happy with them, but in case they are busy, maybe you'll have me give them their card, me to call upon. If you're booked up and you need somebody else, I'd appreciate the opportunity. Even if you only use me one time for that, it'd be great. And you'd be a win-win. You might get, you might like you better personally. Remember too, it's not all about the photographs. It's about you personally. It's about you as a person. What are you going to bring to this whole thing? So there's so many levels to this and there's no right or wrong. Yeah. But on that sense, you can also call up agents, you know, you can, you can look at listings on MLS or Zillow and find mm -hmm. agents that you can tell how are using their iPhones or not professional pictures. And then you can go and give them a call and say, Hey, you know, you ever thought about professional photography? Let me show you what I can do for you. Ooh, but they could think their photography is professional and they're going to, okay. Yeah. I don't know. There's, it's a tough one. That's a uh, there, really are, there are listings where you can tell they don't, they know they're not professional. <laughs> you know, I've seen some bad <laughs> listings out there. You know, I, my house is only, I, I only bought my house two years ago. So I, I went through this search recently and, um, there's some bad, bad photos out there. Well, there's a whole website for that. Really bad MLS photos. Are, is but, there? You don't know about that? Come on, no, Brian. I don't know about yeah, that. It's called Really Bad MLS Photos. And this, uh, I think there's a Facebook group. Anyway, but I want to say one thing. Oh, my gosh. You just opened up <laughs> a whole new world from badmlsphotos.com. Oh, my God. Brian, where have you oh been? Oh, my God. Oh, I see. You're, you're too good for that. You're good. I didn't even know about it. <laughs> you see naked people in the <laughs> photos. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> Yeah, so oh. if you haven't checked it out, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not affiliated with that. Do you think we can get them as a sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> the sponsor of the podcast? Yeah. Oh, my but, gosh. Uh, okay, now you, you completely made me forget. I was going to come up with this great thing. and I, I, don't, I don't, We don't have to talk about anything else anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, good, I'm good. This is incredible. Well, we we want to know your feedback. Is there a bad MLS photos <laughs> in London and uh, in Australia? So. Now, I want to say one thing about Australia. I know that it's very different there. I know that you have to charge, if I'm not incorrect, you have to charge a lot of money because the prices are really, we were there a couple of years ago in, uh, in Brisbane and, and we were in, uh, in uh, Sydney and, and up north in Cairns and apologize if I didn't say cans right, but um, it, it really is something very different. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You, you don't even pay attention to Brian. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to sh shut it off now because it's not going to... It's life-changing. Bad it life-changing. I have to bookmark this on my phone. This is going to be like... <laughs> and there's a Facebook group, you said? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I, I don't really get into oh, it. Oh, yeah, there is. All right. I, I just have to look at my own photos. Oh, and there I is. Photos and I go bad oh, MLS. it's a page. Like. I'm liking that right now. Add okay. better MLS photos on Facebook. We're giving them a nice little promo here. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, well, when you're stuck at home for the next uh, okay. week or months and you want to- It's Brian's new show. It's We're going to do a whole podcast on bad MLS photos. I want to have them on. Whoever okay. started this. That's, I think you should. Okay. I think, you know, they might be available, you know? All right. Uh, anyway, I shut yeah. it off. Back to... Uh, no, that's okay. No, you can... Uh, anyway, um, but I just want to say that um, a couple of things that you want to also, when you're just starting out, and it's the same thing for wedding photography, you've got to get images. So you can go out and you can drive in your car and take pictures like I did today. I don't claim that that's legal or whatever, but you might get pissed off, get people pissed off, but start taking pictures. And when you go shoot one or two houses, remember, you got to put website photos up, but like a wedding, you don't, you know, you, you always see a new photographer and you go to their website and they've, they're a wedding photographer and you can tell by the photos that they've only shot one wedding because it's the same pictures throughout. You want to make sure that when you do it, only show 
one or two photos from the same house and don't show them together. But you can go to your best friend's house. You can shoot um, houses. Uh, you can shoot rooms. You can also find a, a house that they're doing an, an open house for. And you can go in and I've done a whole, I did three houses when I just got my A6000. I've told the story before. I just went out and handheld with no tripod all ambient. I went on and shot three model houses while they were open to the public and doing a barbecue on a Saturday with balloons out the window. And I went and shot, I probably got 35 um, portfolio shots that would have been fine if I needed them. So there are ways to get that. And, you know, you can really, and you're getting experience and you're learning how to finagle yourself around the way around it. Another thing to do is check our, our, our webinars and check out our educational material that's good for you. Check out all kinds of, there's all kinds of resources for you. So get creative and you might want to see if there's another photographer in your neighborhood that wants to meet you. I mean, they may not help you, but because they may find that you're um, you're encroaching upon their territory, which is understandable. But there's a lot of people that will help you go out and just talk about real estate photography and what's going on and, and how to do better. So there are a lot of ways and you just got to get um, creative. <laughs> Excuse me, get creative on what you're doing. Yeah, no, cool. I think, uh, I think, that was well said, Rich. And uh, hopefully to Frazier and Charlie, we answered your question the best we can um, for what we do here in the U.S. And, you know, things might be a little bit different there in the U.K. and in Australia. But, you know, good luck to both of you getting started and um, transitioning to this line of work or this genre of photography or from an agency to going out on your own. I think uh, if you put in the time, I think for anybody, just like anything else, you put in the time and I think you'll excel at it. And remember uh, something really important. There's a trend of uh, photographers, especially on Facebook, that um, are new to this. And it's taking them really long to shoot and really long to edit because they have this, um, they have this anticipation that they've got to get these great looking images. And when you're starting out, don't have on blinders that are showing you that, you know, you're going, okay, I figured it out and I'm making $2 and 50 cents an hour. Um, Look at this in the big picture. Look at this as this is what you're doing now, but it's not what you're going to be doing. Aspire to get better because you're going to be aspiring for what you're going to be doing in five years down the road if you do start doing design photography. You know, don't look at it as a McDonald's or a drive through Look at it as an opportunity to pay your dues for a year, for two years, and maybe work for a, an agency um, and then go out on your own. But just remember, it gets better, it gets faster, it gets, uh, it gets much better. Uh, the more you do it, the, uh, the more experience you have, the uh, more time that you have to try and, and learn your craft. So, Cool. Rich, I got a question for you. I've always wondered this every time we record, and I keep forgetting to ask you. Over your right shoulder, there's a picture of you and a guy with a mustache. What am I looking at? <laughs> I'm who's surprised the guy, who's the guy in the mustache? I'm surprised nobody's ever mentioned it. Hold on, let me get it. I've always wondered, and I always forget to ask. But now I'm just sitting there staring at that big I'm gonna, I ripped mustache. it down. Okay. This is a funny story. Okay. Ah, so it's not a different guy in a mustache. No. Is that a This is actually... <laughs> what, what is it? Okay. I did a little movie. You have to look on YouTube. Movie. It just... <laughs> I, you can't even, I don't even think you can find this movie. It was um, the story of Joaquin Phoenix, who was uh, the, uh, the original, really, he was the uh, Zorro, the, the take, or the take from the rich and give to the poor. Um, we had a, ha we had a movie and we had to have a head and this guy, this is a fake prosthetic head and we had to carry, I would did props. So I had to carry this head around with me. Uh, for the whole movie, and we we would put it into a basket. But I did uh, the opportunity, and it reminds me of a movie you're probably too young to know. But Rosie Greer and and I forget the other guy's name, but he did a uh, they put two heads on a person, and it was like a, a horror movie. But he they would walk around, and it was so bad that anyway, that's my uh, my my uh, two headed body. So anyway, interesting. So, never going back up there. Never to be seen again. <laughs> Oh, so you can put it back up there. Well, now everyone's going to look in future episodes for the mustache man. I, 
It's right here. I'm right there. I have some really great pictures back there, but you know, I'm a, nobody, nobody really cares. Wait, I'm going to make it a thing at the end of every episode. You'll explain one of the pictures back there. I would love to. I would love to. Yeah. All right, cool. I had a lot of fun. All right, cool. So I think um, this is going to be one of our last Ask the Guys for a while because I think we have a couple more episodes, Rich, and then we're going to be taking our little spring break for a mm -hmm. little bit like we did last summer. We took a little bit of a, a break and um, we're doing that a little bit earlier this year, but I think we're going to go off for a couple of weeks. We're not sure of the time, but you know, as just like our last little hiatus, <laughs> creeping the guy in huh um we will be back obviously and we're going to spend our little time off <laughs> have a little fun there brian you're making you know, me lose my focus we got some great we got i promise everybody out there we got some really good podcasts coming up yeah the next the mm -hmm. next two or three we have are really really good and in depth and some really cool pertinent Pertinent. That's a good word. Pertinent yep. information. So it's going to be good. And then, you know, we're going to spend our time off just gathering guests and putting a list together of new people that, you know, if you want to hear, uh, if you have any ideas for people you want to hear, just let us know. But um, we're always looking for for good guest interview and unique opportunities. And I know we've gotten a lot of great feedback on the business ones we've done. So we're going to try to bring more of those business side of things than just speaking to photographers and talking about their gear, which I know everyone loves hearing. But I think the business thing really goes a long way to helping people work in their businesses. We got the Brandon votes. We got so much feedback from that episode. I think people love that. The episode 99 that was referenced earlier. So we'll try to bring some more of that type of stuff to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great community and um, we're really happy to be part of this and uh, really, really um, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to, this is the first, I've been back from Mexico one week. I'm, I'm blowing my mind because the way what has changed in one week for us uh, now, it, by the time this plays, it'll be two weeks into this. Um, we've never seen any, I've never seen anything like this and I'm really going to be interested to see how it goes. And I just want to say that for, especially those new to this really have faith in yourself. Don't, don't freak out. And I know it's very easy to freak out with, um, you know, if you have any investments whatsoever, or if you don't have any investments, uh, just on what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? And was this the right choice for you? So um, I'm, I'm really, um, I don't want to say I'm concerned because we'll be fine. Uh, but I, I, you know, I'm looking at a couple of months uh, down the road of uh, getting back to normal. And I'm, I am looking forward to, I think we're going to be gangbusters after this happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, well, at least in the U.S. and and um, we'll see. We'll look back, and yeah, I think everybody should start a little journal. I think I'm going to start writing every day little feelings, little things, and uh, see how we feel after this whole whole thing is. And maybe we'll come away from this bigger and better, and and uh, we'll see. But uh, be safe out there, and don't don't go don't go shoot just because you're pressured by your agents. That really bothered me. Um, a couple of people saying in the groups how um, their their agents saying I'm just going to go I'll get somebody else to do it. Don't don't bite into that. Do what you feel because this is bigger than just this one year or a listing. Uh, it's your it's your career and it's your life. So really think about it. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Those sentiments exactly. And just yeah. want to wish everyone out there the best to their families and just pray to everyone to stay stay safe and stay at home for now. Just uh, stay at home and we'll get through this. Yep. Okay. All right, Rich. Well, As be always. sure to subscribe to uh, shootingspacespodcast.com and check out our blog, shootingspaces.net. We have the webinars coming up. Well, we, we've, we've already done our webinar. We have it. Uh, well, we're going to put it, we're gonna put it up um, for people who do oh, yeah, couldn't yeah. attend. People are going to be able to take it and download it and purchase it and all that stuff. So. Two hours of editing. And, and I'm going to go through all the hits and uh, all the really great techniques of editing, but it's going to be really a good, I'm really a really great feeling for our podcast. I mean, our webinar tomorrow night on, on editing and I, I recommend anybody check it out, but um, it's going to be something and we're going to be doing other webinars. It's tomorrow up. night time of recording. One when this releases recording. next week, it already happened, but um, right. You know, if you're listening Correct. to this and it already happened, it will probably yeah. be re released sometime this week. If you're interested in checking it out this week or next. Yeah. So. All and, right, cool. Yeah, and uh, Brian, you're going to go out and uh, you're going to go shoot some spaces. You, you, or you're, you're, 
you're done. You're well, I'm done off. shooting, but I'm getting the 90 millimeter tilt shift from Canon. Oh, great on Friday, so I might have to shoot some spaces. I can't even imagine shooting spaces with a 90 millimeter tilt shift. Yeah, you know, I've always been, and I know we we're about to say goodbye, but I've always been, <laughs> I know I've always been very into that compression you get from a telephoto <laughs> lens. So I'm actually very curious to see, you know, if I want to go shoot a, a house or a building and stand significantly further back than I would have, how that stuff comes out. So it's going to be fun to play around with. Well, take it for me for a long time. I've been shooting um, details with an 85 millimeter 1.4, a 1.8. And I'm literally going in other rooms, shooting through doorways. So it's fun. Just get creative. Everybody exactly. out there, get creative when you're shooting some spaces. Add measurements expert to your credentials when you purchase an iGUIDE IMS5 camera. iGUIDE is a turnkey solution that expands a real estate photographer's business beyond photography to add 3D tour technology, laser accurate floor plans, reliable room dimensions, and square footage calculations. Visit GoiGuide.com to schedule a quick demo and see just how easy it is to incorporate iGuide into your real estate photography business. Tell them you heard about it on Shooting Spaces. This has been Shooting Spaces. For more episodes, visit ShootingSpacesPodcast.com and visit our education site at ShootingSpaces.net.